first time anyone ever took a photograph of a total solar eclipse was way back in July of 1851, when Julius Burkowski captured this image at the Royal Observatory in Prussia. However, if you ask around, most astronomers would probably agree that the total solar eclipse of May 29th, 1919 was the most important eclipse in the history of science. Observations of this eclipse provided the first observational evidence to support Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity. Sir Isaac Newton had described how gravity behaved back in the late 1600s. Most people learn a little bit about that in high school science courses. What Newton didn't do was explain what causes gravity. That remains something of a mystery for a few more centuries. In the mid to late 1800s, astronomers noticed that Mercury's orbit around the Sun was not changing in quite the way that Newton's universal gravitation predicted that it should. The first explanation was that there might be another smaller planet closer to the Sun than Mercury was. And gravitational tugs from that supposed planet could explain Mercury's orbit. They even gave the hoped-for planet a name. Vulcan, named after the Greek and Roman god of fire and the forge, basically their blacksmith of the gods. However, nobody was ever able to find Vulcan. A number of well-known astronomers searched for it methodically and even spent their time during a total solar eclipse looking specifically for Vulcan, but it simply wasn't there. Albert Einstein became known for his theory of special relativity and other publications in 1906. In late 1915, he published his theory of general relativity, and that provided an explanation for what causes gravity and not just how it behaves. In the process, it also solved the mystery of Mercury's orbit. The basic idea in general relativity is that mass curves space-time. Essentially, it creates a dip that will cause other objects to fall toward it. And that attractive force is what we know as gravity. However, the curvature of space-time also affects the path of light. The path of light will change due to those curves in space-time. And this would be the observational evidence scientists looked for to verify Einstein's hypothesis. The only way to do this was to observe a total solar eclipse and see if the positions of any of the stars way off in the distant background had shifted a little bit. Unfortunately, World War I prevented astronomers from carrying out these observations. It's hard for us to understand just how intense nationalism was back in those days, but it was intense. In Great Britain, they forbade German scientific publications from even being imported. One copy of Einstein's paper was sort of smuggled into the country and made its way to Sir Arthur Eddington at Cambridge College. The problem was, Eddington was a pacifist, and that meant he inherently objected to the war. And that was an incredibly unpopular position in those days. What ended up happening was that a few of Eddington's friends wrote to the British Home Office and asked that he be excluded from the draft because they said he was far more important to the honor of Great Britain as a scientist and able to perform the observations related to Einstein's predictions. And that's how Eddington ended up leading an eclipse expedition to Africa in 1919. Despite less than ideal weather, Eddington and his team captured this image of totality. The giant prominence off of the north limb is still the largest ever photographed during a solar eclipse. A long, slow, and careful analysis of the image showed that the stars in the background had shifted. Instead of being in their normal places, they had shifted by just the amount predicted by general relativity. One of Eddington's friends was British astronomer royal Frank Dyson. Dyson and others had carefully worked with the newspapers to tell the public about the expedition ahead of time. 
So the British were waiting for the results and were really excited when those were announced. But there were no such preparations over in America. And American newspapers, as was their custom back then, went wild. As you can see by this New York Times Magazine headline, Einstein became an instant celebrity in America. The eclipse observations for general relativity have been performed dozens of times since 1919. The original image was black and white. However, recently, Miloslav Druckmuller used high-resolution scans of the original glass photographic plates to create a colorized version of what has become known as Einstein's eclipse. You can learn more about their work at the link in the show notes. Although Einstein did not travel to see the eclipse himself, observations from that May 29, 1919 total solar eclipse verified his hypothesis and revolutionized our understanding of gravity, which is why 1919 is often referred to as Einstein's eclipse.